Previously on this channel, we saw that Muslims can no longer coherently claim that the text of the Quran has been miraculously preserved. Similarly, we saw that claims about miraculous oral preservation fall flat. See those videos in a pinned comment. In this video, what we're going to talk about is that the Quran speaks of itself primarily as a written book and endorses writing as the stronger form of evidence. And so Muslims who want to claim the oral preservation of the Quran over the Quran's corrupted text do so in contradiction to the Quran. Before we get to the Quran itself, we're going to look at some evidence from the early Muslims. We're going to look at their faulty memories up to and including Muhammad himself. Muhammad heard a man reciting the Quran and said, He has reminded me of such and such verses of such and such surahs. But as I just said, it wasn't only the Quran. Muhammad also forgot how to pray. After messing up the prayer, he said, I am a human being like you and liable to forget like you. But of course, it wasn't Muhammad's fault. He forgot. He was made to. He reminded me of the verse which I had been made to forget. And sometimes the forgetting is Satan's fault. Satan distracts a man with the result that he does not know how much he has prayed. And of course, Muhammad wasn't the only one to forget. He said, it is a bad thing that some of you say, I have forgotten such and such verse of the Quran. It escapes from the hearts of men faster than camels do when they're released from their tying ropes. Let none of you say, I've got the whole of the Quran. Much of the Quran has gone. Say, I have got what has survived. Surah 33 used to be recited in the time of the prophet with 200 verses, but when Uthman wrote out the codices, he was unable to procure more of it than there is in it today. It used to be equal to Surah 2, which is currently 286 verses, and we used to read in it the verse of stoning. Umar was concerned about parts of the Quran being lost. He said the verse of stoning was included in what was sent down to him. I'm afraid that with the lapse of time, the people may forget it and say we do not find the punishment of stoning in the Book of Allah. Al-Ashari told the reciters of Basra, we used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to Surah 9. I have, however, forgotten it with the exception of this which I remember out of it. And we used to recite a surah which resembled one of the surahs of the Masabahat, and I have forgotten it. It's interesting to hear about an entire lost surah. When we look at the writings of John of Damascus, he talked about the surahs of the Quran not as being chapters that make up a book, rather as being individual books themselves. Perhaps this reflects how the early Qurans were distributed, or it might refer to a time before the Quran itself was completely compiled. But the book or surah that he refers to as being lost is the surah of the she-camel. I'm sure it would have been an entertaining read given the rest of the she-camel traditions that we find in the Quran, and especially in the tafsir, very entertaining stories. Now, as we transition out of these traditions about forgetting the Quran, I want to go back to one of them and look very carefully at what it says, and it's going to help us transition into what the Quran itself says about written text. Umar added, if I were not afraid of the fact that people may say that Umar has added to the Quran, I would have written the verse of stoning with my own hands. Notice for Umar, what constitutes adding to the Quran? Writing. People would say that Umar has added to the Quran if he would have written the verse with his own hands. So there's a difference between what is remembered or recited and what is written. For Umar, it's writing that makes up the Quran, and this is the case when we look at the Quran itself. Surah 2282, referring to a debt, write it down. Let a scribe write it. Let no scribe refuse to write. So let him write, and do not be too weary to write. That is more just in the sight of Allah and stronger as evidence, and more likely to prevent doubt between you, except if it is an immediate transaction. I can't think of a verse any clearer than this. Allah prefers writing in the Quran. Let's condense Surah 2 to 82 down just a bit. Write it down. Let a scribe write. Let no scribe refuse to write, as Allah has taught him. Let him write. Don't be too weary to write. That is more just in the sight of Allah and stronger as evidence, and more likely to prevent doubt between you. As such, we may look at the Quran and expect to find that it refers to itself as a written document, not something that's preserved in the memories of Muslims. And indeed, that's what we find. But Muslims want to back away from the manuscripts of the Quran because they've been forced to realize 
that they contain thousands of variants. And they say, well, the manuscripts don't matter because we memorized the Quran. But Allah doesn't seem to have any confidence in the memories of early Muslims because Allah refers to the Quran as a written book, written down for Muslims. Allah even portrays himself in the Quran as a scribe. He has sent down upon you the book in truth. Surah 7-2, it's a book revealed to you. We had certainly brought them a book. These are verses of the book. If the sea were ink for writing the words of my Lord, the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord were exhausted. If whatever trees upon the earth were pens and the sea was ink, the words of Allah would not be exhausted. Now as a side note on the preservation of the Quran, you notice the similarities in those last two verses. Let's go back to them. Notice that was ink is added in bold in brackets in Surah 3127, but it's in the text in Surah 18109. So this is an example of some words dropping out of Surah 3127, and translators have to restore that text based on other similar texts in the Quran that they can compare it to. This actually happens numerous times in the Quran, so much for perfect preservation. Surah 25.5 accuses Muhammad of writing down legends of former people and are dictated to him morning and afternoon. By the clear book, it is an Arabic Quran, and by a book inscribed in parchment spread open. This is analogous to the book of Moses, which was written into papyrus, according to Surah 6. So you can see that the Quran clearly is paralleling how it was written with the book of Moses. The Quran also refers to pages to describe previous scriptures, the pages of Moses and the pages of Abraham and Moses. This is clearly referring to written pages. The Quran also refers to itself in the same way, using the same word. The pages of Moses, the pages of Abraham and Moses, and the reminder referring to the Quran, written in honored pages, exalted and purified by the hands of scribes. The messenger recites or reads aloud, we'll talk more about that, pure pages. And we see Allah portrayed as a scribe again. Your Lord is the most gracious, he who taught by the pen. Some Muslims may want to argue that these verses refer not to the earthly book, but to the heavenly archetype. However, the Quran uses different terminology for the so-called heavenly book. For example, with him is the mother of the book. And Surah 43 clearly distinguishes between the two. We have made it an Arabic Quran, and then the mother of the book is with us. Just to summarize so far, Muslims, the Quran refers to itself as a written book, not something that is preserved in the memories of Muslims. Allah clearly prefers writing. Write it down. Let a scribe write. Let no scribe refuse to write. Let him write, 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 write. It's stronger in the sight of Allah as evidence. And the Quran is a reminder written in pages by the hands of scribes. And Muhammad was a messenger reciting or reading aloud pages. So far we've seen early sources talk about forgetting or missing parts of the Quran. Muslims today have no credible basis for claiming preservation via memorization. The Quran values written text as evidence and speaks of itself as a book. Muslims who claim priority of memorization over written manuscripts contradict the Quran. However, Muslims who want to back away from the corrupted manuscripts of the Quran and still claim miraculous preservation through recitation and memorization have a wild card. They claim, as we hear over and over, that all of this talk about the Quran as a book and Allah preferring writing is nonsense because, in reality, Muhammad was illiterate. You can hear it from his own lips. As everyone knows, I can't read! And from the Quran, those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet. So let's briefly address this objection. Muslims claim that Muhammad was illiterate. In their minds, this means that Muhammad couldn't have been influenced by anything else, and so everything that he revealed was from Allah. This is a massive non sequitur. At the same time, Muslims want to claim that the Quran was preserved by oral tradition, and the Hadith were preserved by oral tradition. One's literacy is completely disconnected from how one can be influenced by oral tradition. Muhammad, as a supposedly illiterate person, still, of course, could have heard oral tradition floating around him in Arabia and been influenced by it. And indeed, we have evidence that this is the case. For example, Dr. Andy Bannister's PhD dissertation. But let's look closer at this claim about Muhammad as the unlettered prophet. And we're going to find that translations that attest to Muhammad's illiteracy are based largely on, you guessed it, tradition. 
The philological historical examination of the three Quranic terms umi, umiyun, and umma does not confirm the popular interpretation of umi, which focuses exclusively on illiteracy. Rather, this interpretation seems to reflect a post Quranic approach that evolved in circles of Muslim learning, possibly not before the first half of the 8th century, and that has been shaped further under the influence of Muslim theologians and apologists. Let's illustrate this with a comparison. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet from Surah 7. Let's go to Surah 2. And there are among them illiterates, same word, who write the book with their hands. If umi is to be translated illiterate, then Surah 2 tells us that illiterate people write. There are also traditions that talk about Muhammad writing. Muhammad told Ali to erase something. Ali said no. Muhammad said, let me see the paper. When Ali showed him the paper, the prophet erased the expression with his own hand. Obviously, Muhammad had to know how to read in order to know what to erase. When Muhammad was on his deathbed, he said, Come near, I will write for you something after which you will not go astray. However, Muhammad was seriously ill, and so there were some arguments among the companions. They didn't want him to write something that was irrational that they would be bound to. Ibn Abbas used to say, No doubt it was very unfortunate that Allah's messenger was prevented from writing. The logic is hilarious. Muhammad is seriously ill, but the companions don't want him to write anything in his frail condition because then they'll have to obey it. The way around this is to disobey his order for them to bring something to him to write on. But notice what Ibn Abbas says. It's clear Allah's messenger was prevented from writing. Not that he couldn't write. Sahih Muslim, Muhammad said, Bring me a shoulder blade and ink pot so that I may write for you a document. Tabri talks about this as well. The Messenger of God wrote a document for each of them, which is still in their possession. With all this talk in the Islamic sources about the early Muslims forgetting and losing parts of the Quran, and given the Quran refers to itself as a written document, and given that Allah prefers writing as strong evidence, why is it that modern Muslims claim the preservation of the Quran is by memorization over manuscripts? Muslims are being exposed to what academic criticism has to say about the textual preservation of the Quran, and it's not what they've been taught. There are variants, thousands of them. The perfect textual preservation of the Quran is simply another miraculous myth of Islam. Consequently, many Muslims back away from the evidence and they retreat to their world of tradition, where they can comfort themselves with fantasies such as the memories of Muslims preserving the Quran for 14 centuries, going right back to the early Muslims who themselves forgot the Quran and lost large portions of it. So let's put this all together just to be clear. According to Muslims, Allah allowed the Gospel and Torah to become corrupted, even though no one can corrupt the word of Allah. But unlike the corrupted Torah and Gospel, we're told that the text of the Quran has been miraculously preserved until we found thousands of variants. But then we're told, oh no, wait, even though Allah couldn't preserve the text of the Quran, the Quran has been preserved in the memories of Muslims, going right back to those early Muslims, including Muhammad, who forgot and lost parts of the Quran. Do you see how these traditions, how these lies, keep stacking up one on top of the other? My question to you Muslims is how many lies are you willing to believe and spread in order to try to defend this ridiculous notion of the miraculous preservation of the Quran? When is enough enough?